This is Matt from NoCodeTrainer.com. I hope you liked this video and you can take what you learned from it and incorporate it into your own bubble application. If you do, please make sure to click like and leave a comment in the comment section with how you'll use it inside of your application. If you'd like to be kept up to date with more tips and tricks you can use in your bubble app, please subscribe to our channel and be sure to check out NoCodeTrainer.com for more exclusive content. In this video, we're going to cover how you can add a group as a background that has opacity and then put a text element in it to be able to uh, show it more clearly without the opacity interfering with it, as well as to change that opacity when the element is hovered. So in this instance here, I can hover here. We can see how that text comes back more readable there. Here I can click on it and we're even changing the uh, background and then this one again you can see the text clearly to begin with and then when we click over it the only major difference here is that this one on the right is not actually expanding in terms of its size now these two the green here and this here are using some custom code and this one here is using just bubble itself so let's take a look at what we're doing on those so inside of this one, to be able to set it up, what I have installed in this application is a plugin that's called Classify. It's a free plugin right here called Classify. It allows you to add ID attributes that are recognized by CSS. In your application, if you don't have ID attribute already available to you on your elements, then you would go into your settings, you would scroll down to the favicon area, and underneath where those two colors are, you have a checkbox for expose the option to add ID attribute, you would go ahead and check that box. Once you do that, you'll have the ID attribute input on all your elements that you put onto the page, including the page itself. So for this code, I just gave it this uh, attribute name value of try. And then in here, I have this little bit of code. Now what's happening here is I give it the style tags to open and close those. And then I have my try as the name of this element, basically, it's the ID. The transition is uh, labeled as 0.3 seconds, so that's the timing. The opacity is set at 0.25. And then we have on our try hover is when this element's hovered, this will happen. And we are changing the scale of it. That's giving it that sort of pop out, making it larger and then we're making our opacity at one. So it's not that sort of like see-through, uh, which is the opacity of 2.5. On this other element is the HTML that we're controlling the second element here. And you can see there's a little bit of difference with our background up here. Uh, we don't have background in there, but in here we do have background. And in this one we had opacity, but in here we don't have opacity. So what's happening is we're actually using this value at the end here as our opacity. That's our opacity indicator. And so when you look at the, again, hover, uh, which is the background, we don't have a fourth uh, value. We don't have opacity setting, uh, which basically means the default of one. So the reason of the RGBA, this is the RGBA color code for the colors that we're using, okay? So when you're thinking about just doing opacity and um, having a group with a text element inside of it, you want to, if considering the use of the custom code, understand the differences that this one here that has opacity set directly in there and it's not using the RGB method here where the opacity is in there. That's why this text element, which is a child of it, is also having a sort of opacity set to it. And that's why that text is not as clear to read. This setup here with the opacity inside of that RGBA value is allowing this text to just sit on top basically and be unaffected by the opacity setting onto the group element. Now, if you wanna do this in just regular bubble, what you're gonna do is you're gonna draw out a group and when you draw out the group, you don't need anything with ID attributes or anything like that. But if you are needing to set up a style from the very beginning, make sure you don't have a style set on it and choose flat color for background style. You can choose any color that you want. 
And then right next to the color is your opacity settings. So you can put an opacity setting directly right onto it. And then once you have that done, you can go into your editor and grab a text element and add a uh, text element inside of that container, basically, and remove any style or keep any style that you want to be associated with that text element. And when you do it like this, you don't have to worry anything about uh, opacity of the group affecting the opacity of the text. It's going to be completely separate. Uh, but if you wanted to do opacity on text, you're not able to do it directly inside of the bubble element here. You have to have a little bit of a trick. So the trick to use is a actual dynamic expression for your color value. And what you'll want to do is you're going to grab the actual hex code first. And then I set up option sets that are colors. So I would do option and I would say colors. I create this, I would give it a, a name value in here as the display just so that I can remember what it is. So I'm just going to represent this as blue opacity and I'll just say some kind of percentage probably that I'll be setting onto it. I'll create this, but now I need to have a new attribute. And this new attribute, I'm going to label that as uh, hex code. And this will just be of type text. So once I create that, I can come back into this option that I created and add a modification to those attributes. So I'm going to start this off with hex code. So that's going to get that color, that blue color, dark blue. But now I need my opacity value. So if you go on to Google, you can just Google search opacity hex codes. You'll find this, at least for me, it's always my first uh, choice up there. It's from just GitHub. I just click right into here and they have a whole listing of all of the different uh, color codes for transparency, for opacity. And so you see here the value of the opacity and then the code that you need to add. You add this code to the end of your hex code value. So if I want 50% on that color, I'm going to get, grab it and it's 80. So I'm just going to easily manually add this in here and just write in 80. I'll save this now and I'll come back into my design tab on this particular text. I just want to make sure I have the other one up top as the same thing so we can see the difference here. So let me just bring that up into there. Uh, so on this text here, I'm going to actually make a choice of insert dynamic data for my color. I'm going to say get an option. This option is going to be that option set I just created of option colors. It only has one choice, and that's the choice I'll be taking of blue opacity 50%. And then right here, I'm going to say hex code. Okay, So that's going to come back with a sort of op opaque uh, color. While this one up here has no opacity set onto it, it's going to be as dark as you can see it right now. Now, the way that we want to make changes to our group our group is going to want to change from the 25% opacity to a normal you know, one. So right now we're going to say this group is hovered and we're going to say that the background color and we're going to just change that opacity up to 100. And to make it so that it is a little bit uh, smoother, we're going to add a transition on it. We're going to say transitions and we're going to choose the transition of background style. And what we're going to do, that duration of milliseconds, we'll just change this maybe to 500. And then you can have some different choices in here, ease in, out, you know, so you can play around with them and see how you feel about each of them. All right, so you can see those differences when you play around. But on this element here, which we already set up, we have the same settings, okay? So we're just doing the same thing. We just have this without a opacity on the text, and then this one has the opacity as set with that and what we'll do here too is we'll change the opacity now we're going to say when the group is hovered so this group name is group d so let me just type in d and i can find it faster is hovered and then my text i want to change the font color and i'll just put it right onto that darker blue so let's go ahead and preview this page and see how all four of these are looking right now All right, so we've got that up. So you can see down here, we've got the add text that has that sort of opacity of 50%. Up top here, no opacity. When we hover over this, you can see the changes that take place, okay? And when we do this here, we've got that and we've got this. Now on that text, we didn't do the transition. So you can see the text kind of hits faster 
right? So we'll have to come back into our editor. And when we see this text right now, we're gonna add that transition onto it. And the transition we want is for the font color. And we're gonna do the same uh, speed and the same type. And so let's just see how that makes it look a little bit nicer more than likely. Okay, so it just kind of lets it come in at the same time. So hopefully this was helpful to you. I personally would prefer to use only bubble and not have to use any kind of custom code, but in certain situations, it would be very helpful. And this type of code that we're showing you here, especially with this pop out, very helpful when it comes to putting together a subscription page where your users are able to see the different subscriptions that you're offering side by side with the different types of values associated with each of those subscriptions and have them be, you know, with this opacity set onto them. And then when the user actually hovers over it to be able to click and check out more information about it, not only will you be able to show them without the opacity, but you'll also be able to have it kind of jump out onto them as a lot of the major websites are doing these days. So it is a useful uh, trick to have in hand, as well as what we showed with the color codes of the option set and the dynamic choices. One thing to be aware of, though, when it comes to dynamic choices on your colors is that currently the styles inside a bubble, if you went into your styles tab, you are not able to actually select a dynamic expression for your colors, and therefore you're not able to use those sort of option set types of values that we just displayed uh, within a style. So a little bit of a limitation there, but it is still something that you might find helpful in certain situations, especially when you want to get a opacity value onto a text element. Thanks for watching the video. Hope that you found this helpful. If you'd like to be able to get editor access, please make sure that you check out the site, nocodetrainer.com. The link is in the description to the video where you'll be able to gain access into the editor and be able to check out how things were set up within the application itself.